No, Tommy, don't sit on that cactus. Oh, oh, for fuck's sake. That's going to be fucking tough to clean up now. Oh, fuck. What's going on guys, Zach Grimes, and welcome back to the Elysian Draft League Season 6. Today we jump into our Week 7 game against Yodler and the, drumroll please, Chicago Cub Shoes. Now today, we are back once again to play Yodler, a good friend of mine. Yodler, love you man. I've seen the nudes. Beautiful, beautiful. He's a beautiful man. Uh, don't worry, we actually haven't really been sending nudes, but god damn it do I wish we were. <laughs> okay, let me stop. But, Yodler is our opponent today. He is the coach of the Chicago Cubs. Juice. He's currently 1-5 with a minus 3 differential, which can I say, for being 1-5, minus 3 is a fantastic differential to have. All of his games have been incredibly close. I think, literally, all of his games have been like 1-0s or 2-0s. And then his win last week against Cubs, which was his first win in the season, was a 5-0. So he, you know, he's mathematically out of playoffs. There's no way he can make playoffs. Um, but he's still, you know, playing games and doing pretty well, so a uh, fair play to Yodler. Um, but that means we're in a weird spot. Uh, this could be one of those games where Yodler kind of throws it, not because he can't think he can win, because Yodler can absolutely beat me, uh, because he doesn't have anything to win in, from this game. He doesn't have anything to gain because he cannot make playoffs. We are currently 6-0. and We are still undefeated this season, and we only have three games left, so I'm praying, I'm hoping if we go... To the rest of the season, undefeated, that'd be fucking cool, because it's never happened to me before. I've never, I've always been like the one to sneak into playoffs, but so far we are undefeated, and uh, nobody's been able to knock us off the top so far. Uh, but Kraft is fucking quickly behind us, so we uh, have to keep that winning streak up. Um, so yeah, Yodler's in a weird spot. He could not really try very hard. He could also bring complete heat and fire and just <laughs> destroy me. Um, but his team is really fire as well. He has Tapabulu, Scullipede as a Zemon, Gligar, Selgor, Pissimian, Mega Ampharos, Chandelor, Vaporeon, Jirachi as a Zemon, Piloswine, and Zankus. Very, very good team. One of my favorite teams in the league, actually. I think it's a really, really good team. Uh, it has a few weak points, um, but, you know, his the cores are really strong. You know, Tapu Bulu, Mega Ampharos, Jirachi is a very, very good Fairy Dragon Steel core. It's a fantastic Fairy Dragon Steel core. Chandelure, Vaporeon is very, very good. And uh, again, Tapu Bulu, that's a very, very good Fire Water Grass core. You know, uh, he has Gullipede there. Very, very good speed uh, boost um, sweeper at the end. If he runs Life Orb or if he runs Z-Move, um, he could definitely put in some work. Uh, and then you have Mons like uh, Vaporeon, which are very, very annoying to kill. Ampharos, which is the tank of his team. Ampharos will take any hit and dish out a huge hit back, uh, so it's very, very tough to prep for. And he's a lot of mons like that, like Tapu Bulu is not a mon that will die in one hit, Ampharos is not a mon that will die one hit. You know, Jirachi and Chandelure, Sh Chandelure doesn't have very good HP, but its defense is very naturally good, and its um, typing defensively means it could take on a lot of mons like Bugs, Poison types, um, you know, stuff like that. So it has a decent defensive typing in that regard. Uh, so a lot of his mons are very, very hard to Oko, especially mons like the Vaporeon and the Gligar, which that core literally makes me want to kill myself. I can't sleep at night because of that core, because it's so disgusting and really, really hard to beat. Um, and yeah, and then he has some weird mons. Aselgore could be very, very scary. Pilot's Wine could be very, very scary. Zangus could be very, very scary. It's really just how he brings them. Um, if he wanted to, he could bring Choice Bandit, Tapu Bulu, Choice Spec, Chandelure, and he could probably destroy me. Um, but, actually I guess he wouldn't because I have a set that beats both of those, but if he wanted to bring straight heat, I think he could do it and do very, very well. But I don't know if he'd exactly do that because I don't know if that'd be the smartest thing for him. Because my team is very, very bulky, but it also has a lot of offensive mons um, that he has a hard time dealing with. His fastest mon is... Aselgor, well, Aselgor is way out there, like at 150 or something. We won't count that. The, the fastest mon on his, speed, speed, uh, on his team, aside from Aselgor, is Scullipede at 112, with, obviously with the speed boost, we don't, won't count that either. It really is the Jirachi, it's the, really the fastest mon. Um, outside of those two, because, you know, it is the fastest mon. And then after that, you have, like, um, what? Well, you have Zangus, and then you have Chandelure, and then you have. Gligar, I guess, and Passimian, Tapabulu, so he is, he's a weird team. He has a lot of fast mons, like Aselgore and obviously Scullipede with speed boost, but other than that, his team is actually quite slow. And there's one mon in particular that I'm hoping to take advantage of that with. So, enough of this fucking yimmer yammer. Let's get to my favorite set of the week. We have Zygarde Z-Trigger back once again. Shout out to Kenny Omega for the V-Trigger. Love his V-Triggers in New Japan Pro Wrestling. You have to check them out. They are fucking awesome. Z-Trigger is back though. Zygarde, leftovers, aura break, with substitute coil, thousand hours, and iron tail. Now, 
when I drafted Zygarde, I didn't really think I'd bring the Coil set because personally, I never really liked Coil. I think it's, I still don't think it's really great, um, but that might be just a personal thing because I haven't really used it too much. And uh, maybe through using it in this game, I'll learn that I love it. But in this game especially, Zygarde is so good in this game. It is, it is unreal. My fucking internet just dropped in the middle of a video again. Um, Zygarde with sub coil is unreal. Now, it's really annoying when I see people in the GBA and different draft leagues when they have really, really funny EV spreads like this one here. And I always go to myself, I don't team build like that. Am I bad? Am I doing something wrong? I think that the answer is no. I don't think you're doing anything inherently wrong by not prepping like this. But this actually, this set is really, really, I'm really proud of this set because I came up with that by myself. And uh, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. Thousand Arrows, Iron Tail are really the only two moves I need to hit his entire team for super effective or at least neutral, for sure. The only man that resists Thousand Arrows on his team is the Tapu Bulu and the Aselgore, technically, I guess. Uh, technically, Aselgore does, take a, Aselgore does not eat a Thousand Arrows. So, for this, for the purpose of this, we'll just count Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu at plus one will get O code by Iron Tail, which is very, very nice. And uh, we will outspeed Tapu Bulu unless he's Choice Scarf. Now, if he's Choice Scarf, he really does not hit hard at all, uh, which means we can eat a, uh, a Horned Age if need be, even a Wood Hammer if we get to plus one with Coil um, and stuff like that. So, that's really good. We have enough HP and Special Defense that a Vaporeon's Scald will not break our substitute. It does 24.9 max if he has no investment. He's, if he has like four or eight, uh, it still can't break. If he has like 12 or 16, it has a chance. Um, the reason that's important is because a man later down the road is hopefully going to toxic uh, the Vaporeon, which means a Zygarde can set up on the Vaporeon, but only if the Vaporeon is toxic. If it's not toxic, it still beats me because it's still doing too much with Scald. Uh, it still breaks my substitute in two Scalds, and even if I coil up, I don't. I just don't have enough time. Um, but if it's toxic, it will eventually force a switch or a wish, and then I will beat it, uh, which is awesome. Uh, enough speed to outspeed a max speed Chandelure, which is very, very important. Uh, I could have run enough speed to outspeed a max speed Zangus, but I don't really see Zangus being very scary in this game. Although it could be, so... I hope he doesn't bring Zangus, but if he does, it will be actually a little bit terrifying. Um, we'll see how that happens. So, um, yeah, the biggest problem for Zygarde on his team is obviously the um, Vaporeon. It's very, very hard to break. Pilot Swine is the biggest one. Pilot Swine will check this set. While Pilot Swine is alive, Zygarde really can't do much because Pilot Swine will always come in because we don't have a lot of attack investment on this set. Uh, Pilot Swine will eat 8,000 hours very, very well. Um, but if we get a few coils up, the, the reason I love this set is because Zygarde is especially defensive on this set, which means we can take hits from Chandelure and we can take hits from a Selgor. But if we get a few coils up because of Zygarde's natural defense, and with the coil, we actually can take on the Tapabula, we can take on the Scullopy, we can take on the Jirachi, even with Ice Punch. We can take an Ice Punch and Oko with Thousand Arrows. So, I really love that, and I, uh, I'm really happy with this set. Now, because of that, I really wanted to build this team around um, Zygarde, making it work. And uh, it started with Rotom Heat. Like I said, Zygarde has a really, really hard time with Mons like Tapabulu, Mons like Ligar and Mons like uh, even Ampharos to a certain extent. Well, Rotom won't help with Ampharos, but... You get what I'm saying? There's a few mons that really don't. Um, Jirachi. Jirachi and Vaporeon. Yeah, actually, I would probably say that. Jirachi and Vaporeon are the two biggest mons that check Zygarde. And Rotom Heat, uh, Okos, and both of them. So, that's really nice. A choice specs, uh, Rotom Heat just does a lot of work to his team. It Okos, Tap Bullet with uh, Overheat, Okos, Scullipede. Can Oko Gligar after rocks with Overheat? Even with Eviolite, which is crazy. If you're especially defensive, he cannot. But then he's not physically defensive, so it really doesn't take on, like. Zygarde very well, so it's it's kind of okay. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really good against Steam. The only Mon that takes hits really well from Rotom is the Ampharos, which even then, Volt Switch, we can Volt Switch out, and Hidden Power Ice does do 48% if he's offensive. Well, if he's max HP. If he's max special defense, it'll do very, very little, but then he doesn't hit us very hard, so it's kind of give or take. So, that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. And yeah, Thunderbolt is great against Steam. Uh, Rotom is enough speed to outspeed Chandelure. Max speed Chandelure, which means we also outspeed Tapu Bulu. Um, I think the Tapu Bulu or the Chandelure, one of them will probably be Scarf. Or he brings the Zangus. I really hope I don't bring the Zangus, because Zangus is really, really scary. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, next we have Kazooie the Pangoro. Choice banded this week. We're bringing Kazooie back once again. Kazooie was fantastic last week. Um, after rethinking about the game and rewatching it, 
it really did come down to Pangoro having Bullet Punch, and I really, really loved it last week, and uh, I think this week will be no different. Choice Band Iron Fist with Drain Punch and Bullet Punch just does so much work against his team. Bullet Punch, 2 AKOs Tapu Bulu, so if he swaps on Tapu Bulu on a Bullet Punch, he will get 2 AKO'd. Um, if he's max HP, or sorry, if he's max uh, attack, max speed. If he's max attack, max HP, then we outspeed him guaranteed, and we just Ice Punch him and destroy him, which is nice. Uh, we have no speed to outspeed, I believe it's a... Um, Gligar? Yeah, I think so. I think we have nothing speed to speed a max or a, a min speed Gligar. If he runs like 16, we'll still have speed him, so that's kind of nice. And yeah, Pangora Choice Banner just does a lot of work against his team. Ampharos doesn't take two drain punches. Chandler gets Oko'd by knockoff. Drachi gets Oko'd by knockoff. Pilot Spine gets a 2 AKO'd by drain punch. Gligar gets Oko'd by ice punch, and we can knock him off. Um. And even Mons like Scullipede can't Oko me. So uh, it's just a perfect uh, fit for Pangora this week. The other reason we're bringing Pangora, which is very, very important, and this is the biggest reason Pangora was coming, is that the six Mons on my team, only one of them resists Ghosts. Um, so a choice Scarf or Specs Chandelure can be very, very scary to this team. Pangoro basically stops him from spamming Shadow Ball, which is very, very scary in the metagame. Like, ghost spam is a real thing. You could just click Shadow Ball over and over again. And I was going to bring, like, Agron... Uh, but I couldn't because it didn't really fit. I was going to bring Miltank, but I didn't want a wall. Uh, I wanted something offensive. Pangoro was just the perfect fit this week, and it really does a lot of work against the Chandelure. Against the Vapor it actually two AKOs Vaporeon with Drain Punch, which is absolutely insane. Um, a physically defensive one as well, so it just destroys his team. And uh, yeah, it's really awesome, and I hope it does a lot of work for us. And I think it will. I think it will. Uh, also, Bullet Punch is nice if the Scullopee gets like the plus six. We can just Bullet Punch him and do like 40%, which is nice. So. Um, next we have Rainmaker the Blastoise, actually I'll just go out for Blastoise first and then I'll go over Android and the Necrozma uh, last. But we have Rainmaker the Mega Blastoise, uh, come back with Scald, Ice Beam, Dark Pulse and Rapid Spin. It sat on the bench last week and I didn't regret it, but I really, really, um, I, I realized how important it is to have Blastoise on the team just as a bulky water type. Uh, it was sorely missed last week, but this week I think it's going to do a really good job. Now, obviously it has two mods in Tapu Bulu and Mega Ampharos that will immediately Oko Blastoise without question. They will absolutely wreck Blastoise's life. However, uh, I outspeed one of them for sure, and the other if he's not running a lot of speed, which is the Tapu Bulu. So, that's kind of cool. Other than that though, he really doesn't have a good way of killing Blastoise. I mean, he has Scullopede if we eat any hit. We have Gligar that we actually outspeed if he runs little speed and we Oko with Ice Beam. He has Vaporeon, which obviously can Toxic me, I guess, but um, he really that's really it. It can't Scald me. Well, it can Scald me, but it won't do very much. Chandelure's Energy Ball can't Oko me, even if he's Choice Specs Modest. Um, Jirachi can't do much to me. Zangoose, we can take a Facade from full and uh, destroy him with Scald. Uh, Blastoise is just great in this matchup, and uh, I'm really happy to have it on the team. Um... Yeah, it's just great. It's just great. And it's another mod that resists fire, which I didn't bring up about Rotom Heat. It resists fire and steel, actually, which means Choice Scarf Chandelure, Choice Scarf Jirachi don't wreck my team with Fire Blast, Spam, or Iron Head Spam, which is nice. So we move on to the final two mods. You already know who they were. Fucking Celesteel and Necrozma. A lot of people said that Necrozma wasn't good when I drafted it. I absolutely have loved using Necrozma this season. I think it's so great. I've really, really enjoyed it. And it might be the team as well, but uh, the, this core of Celesteel and Necrozma has just been so much fun to use, and I'm really, really happy I drafted it. Um, now, in the last few weeks, we've been bringing more offensive sets. We brought offensive Celesteel last week. We brought weakness policy Cel uh, Necrozma the week before. This week, we're going back to the roots. We're going back to week one. We're going back to the fucking standard defensive core because they're really, really good we have leftovers beast boost on uh, celesteela with heavy slam earthquake leech and toxic now the reason for this is because i need a man that can swap in tapu bulu choice ban of tapu bulu does about 30 percent with Woodhammer. um so that does a lot does a lot but uh we can take it uh if he's not choice banded he really can't touch us it also checks the jirachi very very well jirachi cannot beat celesteela 1v1 in any world uh it doesn't happen also checks the pilot swine it checks the zangoose which is very very important um, and yeah, even the mods like Ampharos, Ampharos, I naturally outspeed Ampharos, uh, pretty much, unless he runs a lot of speed, um, and Earthquake does about 40%, uh, so we can get off that damage, which is nice. Uh, it's also there for Scullipede. The reason that I'm uh, kind of worried about this game is because I have a lot of mods that are checked by Celesteela, so I'm worried that if Celesteela dies, then we're going to be in a tough spot, and I still am kind of worried about that. But it's just something I kind of have to accept. Celesteela literally checks one, two, well, okay. Tapabulu, Scullopede, Gligar, Selgor, 
Vaporeon, Jirachi, and Pilotswain. And Zangus. How many is that? That's one, two, three, four. But well, Pissimian as well. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. It, 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 it literally checks nine out of the 11 mons in the team. The only mons it doesn't check is Ampharos and Chandelor, which are checked by the next mon, kind of. Not really. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. But Telesteel is very, very important in this match. And the reason we're running Leech Seed Toxic is because I need to be able to Toxic the Vaporeon. Vaporeon is very, very tough for my team to kill. Besides Rotom, which can't swap in, which means something will have to die for Rotom to come in safely, or I have to predict a wish, a wish correctly. Uh, with Leech Seed and Toxic, we force mons like the uh, Vaporeon to switch out. Mons like Gligar, I can't Toxic the Gligar, although I might be able to if he's not immunity. Uh, he might be Hyper Cut or Default, but um, more than likely I won't be able to Toxic him, so I'll just go for Leech Seed. But Leech Seed plus Heavy Slam does 30%, forces a switch. I might be able to switch out into Blastoise on his. Um, uh, roost, which is nice, and uh, yeah, Heavy Slam Earthquake is the only mo two moves I need to hit his entire team for super effective, or at least super effective damage, or sorry, at least neutral damage, um, because uh, yeah, it's just good against his team. And finally, we have Forsaken and Necrozma. Now, it's really, really annoying because these two do get destroyed by Chandelure, uh, single-handedly. I can't stop Chandelure, and I could bring Miltank, but I, it really, Miltank doesn't have, like, it has a, a huge four-move syndrome. I really can't fit four moves that hit his entire team for good damage. I could run Body Slam Earthquake, but then I don't. I, I still don't hit Vaporeon, uh, and I don't want to paralyze a Vaporeon either. And I don't hit the Scullipede well. I don't hit things well. I just didn't really like um, Meltank in this matchup, um, so I decided to run Necrozma anyway. Now, which is very very important. This is very very important. Necrozma can take two Shadow Balls from a Timid Choice Scarf Chandelure. It can take two. It does 40 to 47. Uh, which is crazy. Uh, and Dark Pulse 2 a kill. So, Necrozma technically can check the Chandelure. Uh, loosely check the Chandelure. Uh, if he's Choice Scarf. If he's Choice Specs, we can't check it. And, yeah. But we also have Zygarde to fall back on as well, which is nice. Um, but the real reason Necrozma's here is to mo check the Mons like uh, a... Jirachi. If he runs sub mind Jirachi. Celesteel is still walls, so it's fine. Um, this thing is a great check to Jirachi, Necrozma. We can go for Dark Pulse and uh, do a lot of damage. Dark Pulse, um, Psy Shock is all I need to hit his entire team for good damage. Or Psychic, sorry, I'm running Psychic. Um, I just hit his entire team for good damage. And it's, it's good against his team. I'm happy with it. Um, the biggest check uh, Necrozma gives me is a check to Mega Ampharos. Mega Ampharos cannot 2 kill this set under any circumstance. A modest uh, 252 special attack Ampharos does 44% max with a Thunderbolt to this set. So he cannot 2 kill me even after uh, rocks because leftovers will come up. And his only knockoff user is Gligar and Zangus. So I don't really expect myself to get knocked off. But you never know. Necrozma can also take one facade from Zangus, which is nice. And it can take, I think, maybe one Mega Horn from Scullipede if he's not the Life Orb. If he's Z-Move, I think we eat one, so that's kind of cool as well. Um, other than that, it's a, it's a, it's a really, really good mod. I'm really happy with it. So, that's the team. Um, I've really rambled on the fucking a ton in this team builder. Um, I, I really am not crazy confident about this game. Like I said, the Zangus is very scary. The Chandelure is very scary. Uh, the Jirachi, if he runs like Subcom Mind, might be a little bit tough to deal with, but he really doesn't have two moves that really destroyed my entire team. It, it, psychic, Dazzling Gleam, uh, he can't hit Sentinel so really no. Um, so maybe I'm not too afraid of that, but definitely the Chandelure and definitely the Zangus. Zangus is one of those mons where I, while I was team building, I was just like, I really don't have any, any switches to that thing unless I bring like Agron with the Chapelberry, and Agron really doesn't do much against the rest of his team, so uh, it was one of those weeks where it's just like, yeah, these these are the um, the the cards I've been dealt, and I just have to deal with them. Hopefully, he doesn't bring Zangus because I don't think he's brought Zangus very much this season, and maybe he won't realize how good against it is against my team. Um, but we'll have to see. So, with that being said, we're gonna connect with Yoder. We're gonna get into this game. Um, I'm really really excited about this game. I've only played Yoder I think once or twice, and I think I've beaten him on both occasions. Um, however, Yoder is very very good. He is, like I said, one in five, so he might not really be trying very much in this game but uh me and yodler we have a we have a bit of a rivalry we have a bit of a rivalry we have a bit of a nudes rivalry so i think he's gonna bring his a game today so hopefully we can uh fucking back it, that up whoa back that up ourselves and uh play well ourselves uh, like i said we are six and oh so 
I would like to go undefeated the rest of the season. It's not like, you know, something we need to do, but it would be really, really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, let's make it happen. We're gonna get back from the order. We're back in just a sec. Did my boy Yodler just call me a faggot? I'm telling. I'm very upset. We'll see what happens here, though. Yodler didn't bring the Zangus. All right, that's great. Didn't bring the Bulu either. Wow. All right. Well, good luck. Have fun, my boy. Uh, Yodler, I love you to death. Um, and he didn't. Yeah, I'm really happy that he didn't bring um, Zangus. Uh, he didn't bring, yeah, he didn't bring Chandelure. He didn't bring the Pilus win. Which is fine. Zygarde has the utmost potential to just destroy his team with a um, few coils up. So I'm really happy about this matchup, actually. I'm really happy about this. I actually couldn't be happier about this. I just really don't want to fuck this up. Leads? I think he's going to lead with... I think he's going to lead with Gligar uh, or Passimian. I think those are really his two leads. So I could lead straight off the bat with Zygarde. Uh, let me just check something real quick. Uh, oh, I should have left my team builder open. Um, Passimian. Just, I'm going to pause right here. Okay, alright. Okay. I didn't want to show you guys teams that I have built. Uh, you do not get Iron Head. You do get Taunt. So I could lead with Zygarde. Um, and I actually think that's not a bad lead. If he leaves with Passimian, I think he'll just go for U-turn. Um, and I can maybe substitute on him, I'm not sure. Um, I could also with Blastoise. Blastoise is really good in this matchup, because he didn't bring Bulu. Um, oh, what do we lead with? Lead with Rotom. I think Zygarde is a really good lead though. If he predicts me to, if he hard reads me to lead with Necrozma, he'll lead with uh, Chandelure or uh, Scolipede. So I could also lead with Blastoise. Blastoise might actually be my lead because if he leads with, actually wait, does Simeon do you get Thunder Punch? You do not. So I think I'm gonna lead with the Blastoise. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to ignore spectators quickly. Um, I'm gonna leave Blastoise. If he leaves with um, Scullopy, we're good. If he leaves with Gligar, we're good. If he leaves with Passimian, we're good. If he leaves with Ampharos, uh, that'll be a little bit scary. But um, not much we can do there. So I'm gonna leave with Blastoise. He does leave with Ampharos. Fuck. Alright. Shit lead for us. Absolutely shit lead. Um, no. What do we do here? Do we hard predict the Volt Switch and go into Zygarde, or do we go into Necrozma predicting anything else? I think we go into Necrozma no matter what, um, to be honest. Don't think there's any argument. Yeah, that that's a sucky lead. I was going to lead with, uh, to be honest, Man for us was his best lead, actually. He really didn't lose against anything except for Zygarde, which if I led with Zygarde, I couldn't outcome anyway, so... Tough lead. It's tough lead. Uh, I'm going to go into Necrozma, though. I cannot let this Blastoise die too early. Even though I think he will click Dragon Pulse, because it's safer for him. Um, so I could stay in and hard read that. But I, if I lose Blastoise turn one, I'd look like a fucking dumbass. I'm going to go I'm gonna go into Necrozma. As he probably goes for Volt Switch. Please go for Dragon Pulse. He does go for Volt Switch, so... That's unfortunate. But uh, right here, I don't know if he goes into Scullopede. If he goes into Chandelure, that'll be the worst case scenario because he'll get a lot of momentum from that. Because then I'll probably have to swap again. Um, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Because I have no good switch into Chandelure. Because I didn't bring Miltank, and I didn't want to. Because Miltank doesn't have a great match against his team. Although, actually, against the 6 that he brought is not too bad. But he does go into Spoopy the Chandelure. So... Yeah, really bad lead for us. If I just led with the Krasma, I'd actually be in a great position, so I wish I did, but I can't let this thing get too low. Um, 31, wait, 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 actually, wait, wait, wait. 31%. I just see that. All out attacker. Full switch. He's timid. He's modest max special attack. Ampharos. He's he's uh, he's modest mass special attack. So, 
Chandler is in the building. Uh, I have two places. I can go to Pangoro, which is a possibility. I could go into Pangoro. I think Pangoro is probably my best switch in. I could also just go for Dark Pulse or Stealth Rocks, but I really don't want to just sack Necroz with this early. I could also go into Blastoise, but Blastoise isn't mega yet, so I think I have to go into uh, Pangoro. Hope he goes for Shadow Ball. If he goes for Will O Wisp, that'll really suck, but if he's sub Calm Mind, we still have Zygarde. Actually, do I go into. Z no, I, I, Zygarde is my win condition. I can't let Zygarde die this early. So I'm going to go into Pangoro, I think. Uh, how much does Blastoise take from from a Shadow Ball? Because I don't know what he'd be, if he'd be scared for spec. Shadow Ball wouldn't do a lot of his... Yeah, I have to go to Pangoro though. I have to go to Pangoro. He goes for Flamethrower. That was a good play. Um... Oh, he's eating my ass right now. Flamethrower can't do that. Wait, flamethrower can't do that much. If he's scarf, wait, it can. If he's modest, he's definitely not specs though. He's not specs. He's scarf. He's scarf. So I think I'm gonna go into my uh, Zygarde. He's scarf, or at least something like that. So I'm gonna go into Zygarde. He doubles out in a Gligar. This is great. This is great. Because I can go for substitute right here. We do outspeed this thing, unless he's max speed. Jolly. Uh, if we substitute on this thing, we could rin... Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, I don't know if what he means by brought wrong set. Uh, I'm going to go for substitute. I do go for substitute as he's toxics. He goes for taunt. Huh. That's fine, though. I'm just going to go for... Dead ass hit hidden power ice. Oh, he, he thought I'd. Oh, I'm not sure there. So he goes for taunt. That's a little bit unfortunate, but I can wait out the taunt turns and go for thousand arrows. This thing will take about twenty five percent, and I can. Um... Oh, he actually predicted that. All right, well, it's unfortunate. Uh, he fell straight down. Goes for U turn. There's very very little. He just goes into where? What's? Where's the bulk? Vaporeon. And I'm just going to stay in a thousand hours again. I have no reason to predict. Otherwise, I need to get up my rocks. Oh, this is not going well too so far. I didn't want Pangoro. Actually, Pangoro can go for... Um, Pangoro can go for... Drain Punch. So it's not the end of the world. It's not over. But it is very, very scary. I'm going to go for a thousand hours again. This probably just goes for Scald. Scald will break my sub. He does double out though on a Gligar. So... Set up hate the Gligar, I just noticed that. My taunt is over, right? Yeah, taunt is over. Did he outspeed me? No, I went for substitute. I'm gonna go for coil. I'm gonna go for coil. See what happens here. He does go for taunt. But we are... I'm gonna go, I think, for Iron Tail. Just because I don't, I don't want to spam my thousand arrows. And this thing can't touch me, so it's fine. We do land, do a little bit of damage. No defense drop. He gets a crit in the U-turn. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, I don't want to run out of thousand arrows though. He goes on a knock off the Pissimian. Pissimian will not appreciate this thousand arrows. So I'm just gonna go for it. If we do it. Speed him. And we do a lot of damage. He goes for U-turn and he does break my sub. So this is interesting. What does he do here? He goes into Vaporeon. Hmm. Disappointing the Scullipede. So, this is a weird situation. I don't think he'll go for Protect. Um, Scullipede, what's your special attack? You obviously, you're not running in Power Ice. 55, probably not. Uh, against Zygarde. This Zygarde set. Mega Horn. Find a plus one. How much does Thousand Arrows do? Thousand Arrows can't kill. I guess I do go for Substitute. Because I, I hope that I, he doesn't break my thing with... I'll see if he's Life Orb as well. So I think I do go for... Uh, I don't want to be a poor sport. Nah, I don't. I really don't think it's just over right here. Um, oh, sorry, I'm taunted. What am I saying? I have to go for Thousand Arrows. 
He goes for a Z move. Savage spit out. Desert Arrows does a lot of damage. My taunt does end, but I don't think I sub or coil or anything like that. I think I just go for another thousand arrows. We do outspeed Simeon. Oh, he didn't. He didn't have speed boost. That was a, I think, a fuck up. Um, I don't want to. Definitely don't want to go for substitute. Yeah, I want to go for thousand arrows. Goes for Mega Horn. Does a lot of damage again. Uh, I think I can take one. Chandelure's Shadow Ball. I'm not gonna, I'm just saying it's GG. It's really not, dude. It's really, really not because he still has like Ampharos, which can take 1,000 arrows. If he goes in a Pissimian or if he goes in a Vaporeon, I will really be happy because then we're in a great position. If you go, I think he'll go in a Chandelure though. I think we can eat one Shadow Ball though, maybe, if we're lucky. If we're lucky. But uh, so far we put a lot of work with this set. So I'm really happy that Zygarde's doing a lot of work. And we got rid of the one of a big threatness team. Now we only need to worry about the Chandelure really. And uh, that's pretty easily taken care of by I guess Rotom. Uh, we need to kill the Gligar though so that I can freely Volt Switch with Rotom. So that's the next task. Oh our accuracy went up. That's why I landed the Iron Tail no problem. Uh, he goes in a Pissimian. I think I outspeed this thing. I think I'm just gonna try to kill it, or I could go for coil. If I go for coil, I'll definitely live the hit, and I'll definitely kill him with the next one. But if I do kill him right here, then I'll have more HP and I'll definitely live the chandelure. So I'm gonna go for thousand arrows. Please kill. Yes. All right. Great. Awesome. I really don't know why he didn't go into the chandelure. He goes into the Ampharos. Now, this is an interesting situation. This is an interesting... So he's definitely ma a modest max special attack, we know this. He's not physically defensive. Thousand Arrows of plus one can't kill him. He will not die. Uh, I could swap out. I could swap out into Necrozma. I'm trying to think, do I need Zygarde to beat... Well, it's good for beating the Chandelure, so I guess I do want to keep it, I guess. Um... Mm. Cause he'll just destroy me with a thing. With a Dragon Pulse. He'll definitely kill me. A thousand hours, it would do so much to the, the, the boy though. It would do so much to the boy. And at that point, I could spam knock off with Pangoro, which is cool. So maybe I do just thousand arrows. This thing is. Hmm. Oh, it's tough. It's really tough. This thing is a really like his only way of killing. Ah, actually, that's true. It's his only way of killing Blastoise and Celesteela, other than Chandelure, which only kills Celesteela. So I think I'm just gonna go for thousand arrows. Let's get rid of this thing, or we'll do a lot of damage to it. He does live. Yeah, so. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I knew he'd live that. Uh, now. Ampharos. He is modest. We know this, right? If he's timid. Uh, Pangoro definitely. 100%. Does outspeed you. And knock off. Definitely kills. So I'm going to go into Pangoro. So I'm gonna go in and go for knockoff because he's no switch in and if he So we just kill the Ampharos, that's cool. But now Chandelure is incredibly scary. In comes Gligar. Um I think I just wanna knock off. We 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 might outspeed this thing. We don't, he goes for U-turn. That's fine. Because that's gonna do a lot of damage to Vaporeon. And that just Oko's the Vaporeon. So wow. Okay. Um, in comes Spoopy the Chandelure. At this point, I'm just gonna let this thing go down. Um, I think Blastoise cleans up. I'm gonna go for knockoff. Goes for Shadow Ball. Ah, we don't live it. I was hoping maybe we live it. I'm just gonna go to Blastoise and go for Scald. If he swaps on a Gligar, it will die. Plus, gonna Rotom, but I just go to Blastoise. Um, and I 
go for skulls. I hope he's scarf. He goes for solar beam. Oh my god, we do live. And we do all call the Chandler. Holy shit, that's scary. Wow. Um, this thing does outspeed us. No, we do outspeed. Oh my god, what? Oh my god, what? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. It was a speed tie. It was a speed tie with Pangoro and Glygar. Um, so that's cool. We lost the first speed tie, but we won the second. Wow, that was a weird game. I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> um, good game to Yodler. Um, he got very, very, I guess, unlucky because he brought the wrong Glygar set to deal with my Zygarde. Uh, he said it was fine. To be honest, once you start a game, you really shouldn't change your set because, you know, it's, it is on, you know, but I, I do feel bad. Um, I don't really think he got very unlucky with anything. Uh, he wasn't Scarf Chandelure at all. Rotom never hit the field, Celesteela never hit the field. Uh, we got a tough lead uh, matchup. Let me just see this here. Let me see what people are saying. Just see if they're any saying anything. I should see. But uh, yeah, good game to Yodler. I'm going to just throw this in the uh, in the replays. I really don't know what to think about that game. I'm very very happy that we won. We are now seven and zero with a positive, I think, like twenty six. Um, positive twenty six differential. Um, I knew that Gligar was really really big setup fodder for my Zygarde. To be honest, though. Actually, no, no. I was going to say maybe Zygarde or Gligar wouldn't be able to break my substitute with Hidden Power Ice because of my set. However, um, that's pretty unlikely. Uh, unless he really had no investment. But, yeah, that was that was, that was was a very, very weird game. Um, he did bring Passimian instead of... I, I mean, Zangus, like I said, I was very, very scared about Zangus. Um... And yeah, I did. I did make a few not misplays at the start, but you know, him making the flamethrower play on my Necrozma swapping it was a good play. Uh, I mean, I was thinking about going into Zygarde, so if I did, I would have been in a great position. But it is what it is. Um, he had he had read the Pangoro basically, um, and then um, yeah, after that, it was just Zygarde doing a lot of work. Zygarde eventually went down to the Ampharos. I knew it wouldn't kill the Ampharos, but it did enough to where um, Pangoro could. Uh, pick it off and then Pangoro also killed a Vaporeon so I don't know how P v Pangoro got two kills I don't know how that happened uh, <laughs> but it, it just kind of did um, and yeah it's a weird game it's a weird game dude good game to Yodler uh, Yodler is honestly really really sound I have him on snapchat we share nudes all the time he is honestly really really sound and uh, I'm sorry that you know that, that kind of happened uh, it's unfortunate but um, hopefully me and Yodler play very very soon once again uh, obviously not in the playoffs because I think he, at this point he's guaranteed out. I think even before this game started he was out of the playoffs because he's one in five. Now he's one in six. But uh, we are, I think, guaranteed playoffs at this point. Uh, like up to this point, I think we were pretty strong contenders. Like unless we really got destroyed in the last three weeks, I think we were pretty solid. Um, like we were definitely in. I think at this point this this just um, solidified it. We are. Uh, I can pretty confidently say we're going to be in the playoffs which is really exciting but uh it's a matter of will whether we'll be uh, undefeated going into the playoffs so that's gonna be a lot of fun if you guys have enjoyed this make sure to heavy slam the like button down below first and subscribe if you're not already to become a member of the agronized that being said have yourselves a wonderful day uh yodler i love you and bye bye <laughs>